Thank you for Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your support and how you've been with me all these ten years. I've I've had some fans that have been with me for eleven years and I'm so grateful to y'all. Um today's sermon is called Just Imagine. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you for what you're doing and what you're about to do. Father, you are just awesome in every way. God, I pray that this sermon will touch every heart and spark. And I pray, Lord God, that you will just um, um, pour into us your imagination for our lives. Speak to me, speak through me. I'm a willing vessel today, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so guys, this is kind of weird how this sermon came to me. Lately, I've been getting two sermons a week, one on YouTube and one on Facebook. Generally, the YouTube one I do on Saturday night, um, and the Facebook one I do Sunday, Sunday morning. So, if you want to see my last night's YouTube sermon, um, uh, called The Sermon with Two Titles, I posted it last night. And if you're watching this video, it will be below it, so you can watch that. But this sermon is called, Just Imagine. <laughs> In Ontario, a few, oh my god, I think about 15 years ago, uh, the OLG, which is the, uh, Ontario lot lottery something um, uh, had a commercial that said that said what I sang. It sang just imagine. It was their slogan, and it was saying how many things you can do with the lottery and everything like that. Now I'm not advocating playing the lottery. <laughs> Um, I, I just, um, am, I just am using that as an illustration, and so I was thinking of, of that, and I was like, oh, I said, Lord, what are you imagining for the world, and he, he just began to show me stuff that he's imagining for my life and for the world. And now I, I won't get into what he's showing me personally or what, whatever, but I will say what I've learned from that is everything starts in your imagination. And the imagination for me, imagination, you get an image. Um, the root word of imagination is image. 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 So you get a perspective or an image of what God wants for your life. And, and it could be as big or as small as you want. And that's your imagination. Your imagination is not something you're living in yet, but it's 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 the 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 thing to come. What's to come? And he's saying, if you walk walk in the image that God has 
given you, it will eventually uh, come to pass. When I mean walk in the image, I mean have that image in your head no matter what's going on in your life. Because children are so good at this. They're so good at uh, nothing is too big and too, or too small for a child to imagine their their imaginations are so big and so wonderful. But as adults, life tends to beat us, beat us up, hold us back, and um, beat us down, and our our minds step. Our mindset is our reality gets in the way, and then that ability to imagine stops. And the Lord wants to bring your imagination back today. Everything that has died, He wants to bring back today. He wants to bring life to dead dreams life to dead marriages, life to dead relationships, life to dead job prospects. He wants to bring life today, and he's saying, just imagine, and he's like, don't be afraid to imagine and then it, it not come to reality, because even if it doesn't, some form of that imagination, that thing, that image that God gave you will come to reality. What I mean is, um, even if what you exactly see in your mind does not come to reality the way you want, some seed of that will. So, for example, Let's say you're, in your imagination, you've always wanted to have a family. You always wanted to have a husband, you always wanted to have children. You dreamt of that since you were a little girl. And now you're, uh, let's say, 45, 45 and still not married and still no husband, still no children, you have your degree, you have everything. But then y you, you decide to um, volunteer at, um, at a school where you impart to children, where you speak into their lives, where you do do so much for them so your your um wa wanting to have children the way you saw it didn't come to pass but you were still imparting to them you were still teaching them you were still reaching them so it didn't come to pass the, the image in your mind didn't come to pass the way you saw it, but it came to pass the way God willed it. Will it, sorry. And it's just like, so, it's like such a great thing when you do that. So, Imagine as big as you want and be open to whatever God wants to do. Like a lot of people, we have our plans and and we like say, I want to do this at this age, I want to do this at this age. And nothing against planning, but sometimes our plans get in God's way. And when you get into God's way trying to do things the way you want to do them, it kind of, um, 
it kind of inhibits God from doing what he wants to do. Or sometimes God gives us something and we we do it the first part the way God said, but then we it doesn't happen the way we we thought. So we think, okay, I did it the way you said, but now it's not happening. So now I've got to make it happen. And now the Lord is saying, you don't have to make it happen. I'm making it happen. I'm doing things behind the scene that you have no idea about. Just leave it alone. He says, I know it's hard to trust me. I know you like control, but baby, I got it. I'll say that again. He says, I know it's hard to trust me. I know you like control. I know it is scary, but trust me, I got you. And he's saying, do not be afraid. He's also saying, do not be afraid to resurrect those dreams, to resurrect those hopes. To resurrect that business plan, to re- to resurrect that old flame, uh, to re- don't be afraid to resurrect it, because sometimes at the time you first did it, it wasn't his time for you, but now it is his time. He's like, don't be afraid to imagine. He's like, don't be afraid to dream big. As long as they're, as long as you're open to the possibility of them, of your dreams, uh, being his dreams for your life. Um, some, sometimes people think dreaming is like pie in the sky and whatever. No, but because you need to get an image of what God wants for you in your life before it can become a reality. And I'm not saying just to think it and it will happen. I'm saying get a picture of what God wants for your life. And the way you get a picture is just by asking and then write whatever he he brings to your mind out. It doesn't matter how crazy. It doesn't matter how unlikely. But just document it. Um, years and years ago, I wrote a vision plan for Emancipation Ministries. And I just keep writing the plan and writing the plan up until today. I have that plan, and I'm still waiting for the majority of it to come to pass. Nothing's too big for God, and He wants to know. He wants you to know that the image you had has not gone away. It's just changed a bit from what you saw. But the seed of that image is still there. Like it doesn't, and you're not too old or too young uh, to get an image from God to to ask Him, Lord, what what do you see? And He'll show you pictures of of what He has for you. Or sometimes He might not, depending on His plan for you. But he's saying, don't stop hoping, don't stop dreaming, don't stop doing all that. Um, He's saying, it's coming, but you've got to just hold on. And while you're waiting, he said, do the grunt work. Don't just do passive dreaming. Passive dreaming is like, um, oh yes, 
I'm dreaming to get a house. I'm dreaming to get that business going. I w I'm dreaming to get a husband. He's like, uh, be active. If you're, if you're dreaming to get a house, L look at the real estate mar market. Look at the steps. Look at what you need to do to get that house. Um. He, he said, uh, work actively. He's like, imagine it, but work actively. But at the same time, when you're working actively, don't be pushing. Be planning, but don't be pushing. And if God changes, be and if God changes the course of that vision, be open to that. Because sometimes that's what he does. Sometimes he changes the course to bring out of you something that, that you have no idea about, about, but you'll need for this next leg of your journey. See, because the Lord knows the tools that he's going to, that you're going to need on this next level and that he's going to use on this next level. So right now, the trouble you're going through is actually the tools that you'll need. And this sermon is not for everybody, but for those who it's for, um, Listen up. Um, the trouble you're going through right now is developing in you the tools that you'll use and the tools that God will use for the next level of your journey. So, how are you going to minister to single to single moms when you haven't even talked to a single mom? in your life. How are you going to minister to um, the LGBT community when you don't know LGBT people? It's like, see the tools that you're developing right now are the tools you'll need for your other places in your journey. So, don't forget to take the lessons of where you are right now into the next leg of your journey. And be aware that wherever you are right now, your brain, your emotions, your spirit, is gathering intel for every experience, every journey, every problem, every success, your brain is gathering intel for what you'll need in your future. So let your brain gather intel. Don't don't consider it as bitterness. Don't let it turn into anger. Don't let it turn into self-doubt. Let it be intel. Learn from it. Process it. And don't turn it negatively inward. Because that's what we tend to do. We are, we're like, I'm such a this and this person. But no, no, you're not. You're his child. And don't say that about his child. I talked to uh, parents and children yesterday, lots of children yesterday, but he will be a daddy bear for you, and don't say that about his child. But take it as intel to use later. T take each experience and the lessons that you use from each experience as intel, as information for later. Because you'll need that information. 
that man left you not because you were a you were a bad person. It was just that God needed the intel. God needed to sh to to teach you the intel that you would need the information that you would need to take into your marriage so that you wouldn't um so that you could be a you could be a more informed person in your next relationship information is first and foremost to inform you it's to let you know and when you don't take in the information you don't know so everything in your life it comes to teach you something so take in the lessons as intel as information to inform you of the characteristics of what you need to know on your journey. Don't say why I'm going through this. Inst instead, a better question is like, what is the intel? What are the lessons that you're teaching me through this circumstance? Are you teaching me patience? Are you teaching me love? Are you teaching me, what are you teaching me? Are you teaching me to trust you? Are you tr teaching me to, you know, whatever? And, and that information will help you along your journey. So, so I would say, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, because things are terrible but in everything give thanks because you don't know the the intel that your brain is gathering from every situation and how it will you uh, be used to benefit you because um i know I know oftentimes for me, I'm like, why am I going through this? Why is this happening? But what I don't know is whatever God has for me in the future, I would need this time in my life to draw from, to draw from, so that I would know how, how certain people live, how certain communities operate. If I didn't go through what I what what I'm facing, I wouldn't know. Like when I um, meet with the government officials um, in my later life, how to discuss uh, certain certain issues that I'm now experiencing. Because experience is the best, not only teacher, but experience is the best. People, pe people who have had experience with something, they know uh, things that other people don't know. So you can say this about single mom and whatever but there is there is no, nothing like actually talking to a single parent to find out stuff and people like to hear from people that have experienced certain things because it is the best teacher and they have gathered intel about how to balance time with children and job and whatever. Whereas a single person with, without children and without a husband, they don't know anything. They know very little. 
and he's saying use information to use your experience as information to gather intel and continue to imagine yourself where God wants you to be. Follow his dreams. A lot of people say follow your dreams. I would say follow his dreams for your life because he has a dream and a purpose that he wants you to accomplish and follow that. And once he gives you little pictures or if he gives you a vision, write it down, codify it. In the Bible it says Write the vision, make it plain. Because writing and codifying it makes it, makes it plain. Makes it stick out more so you can go back to it and say, this is what God did. Michael Todd has a book called Crazy Faith. Um, Michael Todd is the pastor of Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, and he has a book called Crazy Faith, and he talked about the vision for Transformation Church, how he was in his daughter Bella's room, and he wrote down uh, the vision uh, for Transformation Church, and he never gave up on that vision. Never gave up on that vision, and Transformation Church is a hundred times the church that that he that he imagined in that vision, but that vision was a seed, and God did more with that vision then he thought, he said, and God is saying, don't give up on the image I've given you. It doesn't matter how it looks. Just don't give up on it. Don't give up on that business idea. Don't give up on that book idea. Don't give up on that relationship. Don't give up on what I've said about you. Or don't give up on the image I've given you. You say, don't give up. It's coming. Just persist. And do what you know to do. Work. And be persistent. And, uh, and imagine. And he's saying, what are you imagining that you're afraid to imagine because you think it's too big for you? He's saying, nothing is too hard or too big for me. Imagine as big as you can. It doesn't even matter if it seems practical to you. Just imagine it and write it down. It doesn't matter if it seems practical to you. You'll work out the practical details later. Just imagine it. Just imagine. Get an image of what God has planned for your life. And you and he will give you an image image. He won't give it to you all because what God has put for you is so great that if he gave it to you all at once it would scare you and you would never do it. So he will give you an image of what you can handle. And then he'll give you more and more and more and more. And as you walk through that situation, you'll begin to see that image in little ways come to pass. You'll begin to see it. So get an image. And he's saying today, just imagine. God bless you. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart be? 
feeling lighters for you, Jesus. I wanna love you, be still. And I stand in I screwed it up. Okay. Surrender by the morning. What will my heart give? Will I? It's for you, Jesus. I love you, be still. Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I show? Hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? I love you, be still. Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I chill, chill, hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, before I sign off, uh, the Lord wants me to tell you, um, of the story, of a bit of the story of, um, how that song, My Mercy and Me, came to be. There's a movie called I Can Only Imagine, and it tells the story of the lead singer of Mercy Me, and how he grew up in a really disastrous um, he had an alcoholic father who was um, verbally abusive and I think physically abusive too. And he just, um, so the, the person, Bart, would, would everywhere put, put in write everywhere he would write everywhere he would uh, write everywhere um, I can only imagine and he and that song became one of the biggest song, songs in Christian music history it was everywhere um, and he's and God is saying, what difficult situation that you, are you in right now that is preventing you from imagining? It doesn't matter if you live in one, in a one room apartment or, you know, if you have two kids and, and you can barely pay your bills. He's like, still imagine because still write it down, still imagine big, because you never know what God has around the corner. And he's saying, don't let your circumstance uh, prevent you from imagining as big as you want to imagine. There are times to be practical, and yes, you'll have to scale it down, but not now. He's saying, now is the time to imagine. And just write it down, whatever you're imagining. Nothing's too big or too small. Just write it down. Write it down, codify it, and see the seeds of it coming. And be open to um, God's ideas for it. You may, you may not be able to, you know, uh, go to teacher's college, but you can mentor, you can mentor, um, some of the kids next door with your own. Uh, you can have a Zoom call 
with some of the kids next door with the with busy parents who are working. If your kids are at home or if your kids are in school, you can mentor them by um, offering to uh, to have a, a Zoom call with them so that their parents can work until you could get the money to go to teacher's college. There are different ways to do different things. So ask God right now, how can you start, um, how can you start um, taking baby steps towards what you imagine? Because no step is too small. Um, he is he is open to giving you uh, the tools. He's open to giving you uh, the resources if you would just ask him. And he will bring the resources. He will bring the people uh, for that vision. But you you have to be open to what he's wanting and be open uh, to the vision, to your imaginings changing in reality. And But the seed of it is still the same, but the idea may change in reality and be open to that. And let go of control of your imaginings, because they were his before they were yours. They were his before they were yours. And make sure it's his imaginings and not just something that you saw somebody do. Because the danger of this culture, we live in cop copy culture. And... And... Um, the danger of cop copy culture is uh, uh, you not being the best you. You're trying to copy other people, thinking, oh, I want that, I want that, and that's not designed for you. Now, it's, it's different if you can, uh, if you can, um, share ideas or use a skill that another person uses to make your idea more pal palatable and better, but just to straight out copy someone because you're like, oh, I want that, I imagine that, so let's just do that. Let that person walk their own lane, but your lane is great too. Whatever God has planned for you is great. So just imagine that, imagine that, get an image of your, in your mind of what God has planned for you and walk in that image and live in that image every, every day. God bless you. And don't let people talk you out of the image uh, that God has for you because people can only see as far as they can see and they're not meant to see everything most times. You know what God has put in your heart and you know what God has told you to do and it's not crazy and it's not, you know, outlandish. God's going to do it. if. If God said he's going to do that, he's a God of his word, and there is nothing that is going to prevent him from doing what he's going to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for imparting your images today. I just bless you for the idea.
and for the images you're resurrecting, Lord God. I thank you for the hearts that you're mending. I thank you for the brokenness that you're dispelling in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you that you will rise and show yourself strong in our lives. Teach us, God, through our pain. Teach us through our process. Teach us through our successes. Teach us through our uh, great moments, oh God. Just teach us. Give us tools. Let every, let every life lesson be a tool that you are that you are shaping and molding us by, in the name of Jesus, amen. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I shout? Hallelujah, unto my knees will I fall. Stand in your presence, will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. What do you say? Just imagine. God bless you. See you next week. Whatever the pumps, whatever the bruises, whatever the pain, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made me walk on Oh, how deep the wound is, oh, la, 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 la. Still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you fall And he says one thing that is stopping some of you from imagining is you think you're so flawed that God can't use you, so what's the sense of imagining anything more? And he's saying, my cross, the fact that I went to the cross and died for you to save you from your sin and from yourself, that has been you flawless, and that has given you the the ability to imagine. So, the cross has made you flawless, and that has given you the ability to imagine. And he's saying, don't be afraid to imagine big things because you've made mistakes in your life, or you've messed up. That's okay. God is, God specializes in using your messes to turn into the greatest message ever. So don't let that, don't let your past 
don't let your hurts, don't let your pain, don't let your life stop you from a match. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Uh, the cross has made, the cross has made you. Oh, man.